Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Happy Labor Day. This is Faith Family Focus. I'm Faith Suggs, your co-host, Duke Women's Basketball graduate and social media director and director of basketball operations at Long Island University in Brooklyn. This wonderful man to the left of me now is Shaver Suggs, my father, former NFL player with the New York Jets and Cincinnati Bengals, also served on the executive board and VP with the NFL PA, also Super Dad. Hey, Dad. Happy Labor Day. Happy Labor Day to you, Faith. So good to be back with my beautiful co-host. <laughs> I, I, we haven't seen you in a while. I haven't seen you in a while, too. So we had a nice Zoom call with your brother last night. That was nice. It was, it was FaceTime. And it took you like five minutes to figure out how to use it. But we did. Devin, Devin's excited. He's at Yale. He's enjoying his, 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 his college experience. Uh, he set up these LED lights that he that has flicker, different colors. So it looks like he's like in like a glowing spaceship room. Uh, Schaefer Suggs keeps calling him Spock, and he doesn't like that. So Devin's settling in. He's he's picking up the phone. He's enjoying it. How are you, empty nester? I'm enjoying it. Um, so you know, I finally got moved in. So that was a task, but it's nice just to be able to to get settled in and uh, I appreciate you, uh, you know, taking, taking the leadership last week and doing a couple of shows that show on Friday, which is absolutely phenomenal, but I'm enjoying it. It's uh, I'm looking forward to, to spending some time and redefining myself as an empty nester, which was with yeah. two my two, our two golden dudes. Right. What is the feedback? I mean, have you been seeing that our show on empty nesting has been applying to your life too? You know what, I, I think, Faith, um, there's so much joy in my life right now. You know, I am an older dad. You know, I did spend some time by myself before I got married. And I'm just looking forward to just knowing that, you know, both my kids are settled in, you get settled in your career, and, you know, finally getting the devil off of college. It's, uh, I'm, I'm, it, there's a lot of joy. And uh, there's, you know, it's not as, it is, it's different, but it's not with, I think with, with FaceTime or the fact that we do this show two or three times a week, um, that you guys are two hours away. Um, I, I'm just going to enjoy, enjoy retirement. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that's special. And hopefully we can get you back out to that area. We can celebrate a little bit, have to see each other and hang out. Hopefully when this stuff is a little more easy right. than that. We hope everyone's staying safe, but we welcome back everyone to F3. Yep. We focus. Uh, so those who are new, welcome. Uh, feel free to ask us questions, shoot us a lay, hit a, li hit a like. We are very interactive with our viewers. Our goal is to use our stories um, and our experiences and faith to strengthen the family core of our viewers and those around us. So we appreciate you guys. We're excited for today, late day. Um, everyone had a long weekend. Everyone's rested. Everyone's enjoying their time with their family. So. It, everyone should be in a great mood. So we see you guys coming in. Um, a few things. We have a website, faithinfocus.net. We have blogs. We sell mugs. I have my hand model back. He needs to model his mugs. Can't model your mug. Yep, so we're excited. For those of you who are interested, please DM us or email us. We put uh, another ad out for us so you guys can see it. A lot of people love it. Um, follows on Facebook, you see a lot of photos of our wonderful viewers, so exciting. Um, today we're excited. Today's the 49th episode. I, 49. Yeah, 49th episode. 49. I wow. I 48th on my own on <laughs> Friday um, with my first solo show. We, I talked a little bit about something that I thought was cool that I was reading about a little bit and had heard about when I was watching church a little bit was Purpose and the role that God wants us to fulfill in life at the moments we're in. So I thought it was special that I talked a little bit about that and I enjoyed it. Um, talking by yourself for 55 minutes was exhausting, um, but um, I think that it was fun. Hopefully you can do it one day, Dad. I mean, you talk to yourself regularly anyways. <laughs> Not with as much substance as you talked about on, on Friday. I was, I was amazed and for the viewers, if you hadn't get a chance um, to see that episode. I mean, you had over 1,500 views from that show. Uh, it was very special. I actually found myself watching it a few times. And you know, I kind of talk, talk about it. I know we're going to run a, 
a really quick video, but I wanted to talk a little bit about there's some things, there's some 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 diamonds that you you pushed out, diamonds that you pushed out, some the observe uh, for the viewers to, to listen to. I was amazed, um, you know, obviously you being my daughter and understanding and knowing, you know, and living and watching you make that transition in your life um, was, was pretty amazing, but it, there was a lot of joy uh, listening to that. I just want to congratulate you on a phenomenal show. Thank you. No, it was fun. It was exciting. And like I said, we're going to dive a little bit more into the discussion part of this topic today, but it was ex it's an exciting topic and applies to every single person on this earth. Yeah. Um, I think we're all navigating this continuously at many times in our lives, trying to figure out what our purpose is, what we love to do, what is something that brings us so much joy. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so we have an awesome video before we dive into a great discussion, something to just wake everybody up and get you guys ready. I love this. You no, know, Russell Hornsby, if we're Without commitment, you'll never start. But more importantly, without consistency, you'll never finish. It's not easy. If it was easy, there'd be no Kerry Washington. If it was easy, there'd be no Taraji Henson, P. Henson. If it were easy, there'd be no Octavia Spencer. But not only that, if it were easy, there'd be no Viola Davis. If it were easy, there'd be no Michael T. Williamson, no Stephen McKinley Henderson, no Russell Hornsby. If it were easy, there'd be no Denzel Washington. So keep working, keep striving, never give up, fall down seven times, get up. Ease is a greater threat to progress than hardship. Ease is a greater threat to progress than hardship. So keep moving, keep growing, keep learning. See you at work. We tend to base our self-esteem on what other people think. And that's not really self-esteem. Self-esteem is supposed to be how we feel about ourselves. And I was just saying how dangerous it is to allow other people to determine how you're going to feel about you. And it's kind of like looking into a broken mirror. You're going to look in a broken mirror and then change your face to try to look good in this defiled, busted, broken mirror. And it, it just other people's opinions is a really shitty way to determine how we feel about ourselves. You'll never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. I'll say it again. You'll never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. Now, I've been blessed to make hundreds of millions of dollars in my life. I can't take it with me and neither can you. So it's not how much you have, it's what you do with what you have. And we all have different gifts. Some money, some love, some patience, some the ability to touch people, but we all have it. Use it, share it. That's what counts. Not what you drive is, not what you're flying in, not what kind of house you bought your mama. Dreams without goals are just dreams. And they ultimately fuel disappointment. Goals on the road to achievement cannot be achieved without discipline and consistency. I pray that you all put your shoes way under the bed that night so that you gotta get on your knees in the morning. <laughs> The one thing I'm the most happy about in terms of my career is the fact that I got there with the grace of God, first of all, but short of that, I got there just by working hard, not partying with the right people, not compromising myself in any way or cutting any kind of deals, just by working hard, just by plugging over all along, sawing wood, as I like to call it. I'm a 20-year overnight sensei. I don't get life mixed up with making a living. I was there for all four of my children being born. When the first one was born, I recognized the difference between life and making a living. Their life, you know, our family's life, you know, acting is making a living. 
And what do you think the biggest difference between doing a play and doing, I mean, it's a cliched question, but I'd be interested to know your answer. I, I think a part of what Viola just said is that you get to dig deeper and you get another day right. and you get the energy. Mm -hmm. You do a movie and it's 200 people that are used to it and they don't care and you, everybody's doing their job and mm -hmm. it comes in a theater somewhere and you, you know, you're picking your nose at home somewhere, clipping cl cl right. your nails. There's no energy. Right. Uh, when I was on, on, on Broadway five years ago, Julius Caesar, I made a decision to sign autographs every night. <laughs> what I did. <laughs> yeah, it ain't happening this time. No. <laughs> <laughs> only as I rub my knees, only because my knees are bad, it's hard for me to stand. But, and why did you decide to do that? Well, you know, I wanted to say thank you. Uh -huh. It was my way of saying thank you. And the first night, it, it was like 5,000 people out there. I said, okay, wait a minute. Everybody who has playbills from our show. So, <laughs> so yeah, because it was like people were just wandering up the block. I was like, wait a minute. I forgot. I'm on, you know, 42nd Street. Town Square. I was like, wait a minute. But honestly, you were signing for weeks. the energy. And I was out there an hour and a half every night, every wow. show. But the energy you got back, the stories, the five little old ladies who, who just drove in from Detroit. And I'm like, well, what y'all doing tonight? I said, we're getting back in the car, baby. We got to go back tonight. Wow. And, you know, a little 84-year-old lady was wow. like, baby, if I was three years younger. <laughs> oh, true story. True story. We had, we, we had and, 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 and I say this also, because I hope it happens with this play. We had uh, some high schools come. We had one school from somewhere, I forgot where, and they were doing Julius Caesar. And some young yeah. kid was like, well, you know, my Buddhist is a bit different. You know? <laughs> <laughs> He's more of a classic stoic. And, uh, but it was great to in engage and in, 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 in exchange with these young people. With There was, a, there was an energy. I, I got more from it than I gave to, to huh. the people that I signed for. That's, you know, you, you don't get that. Uh, you know, the odd thing about success in film is, is the budgets get bigger, you make more money, but they become more formulaic. Mm, yes. So you don't get the opportunity. So I, God willing, if I stay around long enough, this is what I'm going to be doing. You know, you're always affected by opinion, but the, the, the more opinions there are of you, the, the, me, the more I, the less I look at them because I just can't live my life based upon what other people think about me. So I can't concern myself too much with what other people think, you know, it's just not healthy. I, I don't think I'll con I could continue to do what I do if I was constantly worrying about what somebody thought about it. And anything you want good, you can have. So claim it. Work hard to get it. When you get it, reach back. Pull someone else up. Each one, teach one. Don't just aspire to make a living. Aspire to make a difference. You don't have to compromise yourself. You know, if there's something you don't feel good about, then don't do it. The most important choices I've made w was to say no. And I've said no many a time to films that I just didn't, especially early on. I just didn't feel comfortable with uh, they, uh, they there was one script that was brought to me I called it the they couldn't kill <laughs>
understand that you were fighting your way. And that was, hearing you talk about that on Friday um, brought a tremendous amount of joy to me because you were fighting your purpose. You know, and at 67 years old, when you talk about my purpose, there's been so much. <laughs> you know, I can go back many, many years and many, many episodes of my life that we'll talk about. But as a father, watching your child grow uh, and watching them go through these these stages was 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 a real special treat, and that's why I was uh, I was just mesmerized by the words that were coming out of your mouth. And I guess my question to you was. Was there anything specific that happened other than the fact that you were not playing, but was there anything specific that happened while you were at Duke, while you were playing basketball, um, that really kind of paved the way to what your purpose was? I don't, you, the question was like, did anything happen? I can't pinpoint a, a specific moment um, in my life where I started to view basketball as a vehicle instead instead of a livelihood. Um, I think that when I realized, I think, and I spoke a lot about this on Fridays, is be where your feet are. When I took the time to kind of be where I was at and I looked around and I was like, I'm at Duke University um, on, a, on a free scholarship um, and I don't have to worry about a thing in the world. I can just play basketball, but also I had this opportunity to chase a degree that can set me up for a lifetime if I use it correctly and can network and, and, and really take the time to cherish what I have in front of me. I think that is the moment I realize it's no longer a livelihood. It's no longer what I am. It's more kind of like what I'm using to get where I want to find out who I am. If that makes sense, like this, this, this is now we're, we're in transition stage. I, I feel like I view those four years as a transition stage in my life. Like, figuring out who I want to be next. Cause I was for 18 years, basketball, 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 nonstop. And there was no time for like figuring out who I was. So I think this is like the time for me to be, okay, I've gotten to this place. Do I want to play professionally? Maybe. But I started to see from the beginning that it was like this is more of a transitional stage instead of like a, a, a continuous on of what I've been doing. Um, and I think that for those four years, because I switched that mindset and I was able to kind of like, appreciate the opportunity that was in front of me and appreciate who I was becoming, I was able to kind of put my, my gears towards what's next in my life instead of like be worried about being super present in that moment. I was more appreciative towards everything really in my life at that time. Yeah. And I think it's one thing you said was interesting and I will come back to it when we talk about supporting cast and like people around you. It's like, during that time period, you would call me and you would try to get in contact with me because easily you're frustrated because you don't know what's going on. And you've had hands on for 18 years of, of my career. And I immediately started to distance myself from you and not be as communicative and, and, and open because at the time, like, and I mean, you were so close to we're able to talk about this at the time. It was more like you're no longer you think you're feeling my light. But in a way, you're helping, you're kind of putting so much more pressure on me and like stressful and you're like stretching my brain. Like my brain thinks it should go this way. My brain also has like past me who's like, I should be listening, I should be doing and I should be in the same mindset space he's in. And I think that when I had to distance myself and you think about like you're supporting cash, you're supporting cash towards your purpose. You could have multiple supporting cash through your life as your purpose changes. And I think that in the moment, your job as a supporting cast was just to be the parent, to be the positive person you are from the outside and not be in the space I was in at the time. And I think that you figured that out. And it also made our relationship stronger because like we started to understand more like where we were in life. And you got to devote more time to Devin and his stuff. And so I think it was a good moment for us. But I, that was a, definitely a moment for me when I was trying to figure out what my next purpose was, my next like love was was that I had to pick a supporting cast who kind of emulated what that dream was. And at the time, you were not in that circle because you had yet to really witness because you were we weren't in person all the time. You were yet to witness really who I was becoming and stuff. So at the time, I had to, to realize like I said, I love my dad, but my dad is no longer in the circle. Circle. He's like he's the observer, the ad, like advisor. He's more like 
leader from the outside who I go to when I need and that's like a parental figure. But in the time I had to keep people around me who were able to like help me feel strong in my decision that I was making at the time. And um, I think that that was beneficial for our relationship, I think, in the long run, because by junior, senior year, me and you had had many conversations. And I think you started realizing where my mindset was and you just stopped. You're like, you'll figure it out. You, that was a continue. That was something you always said is you'll figure it out yourself. So, um, good morning, good morning, everyone. But yeah, Dad, to answer your question, I think, yeah. I mean, you talked about your purpose and how it's evolved from parent. We talk about empty nesting. What do you think your purpose is now besides to be just a super parent? Are you, you know what I mean? Are you now in a transitional stage? Well, I, I think I alluded to that a little bit. Being an older parent and mm -hmm. have been blessed with so many wonderful um accomplishments uh have experienced a lot of um, know, um obstacles i've yeah. lived a, I've lived, a, I've lived a pretty full life so i'm not a parent you know your traditional parent that has kids your age you know they're in their late 40s or early 50s and i'm a little bit older than that and i think when people ask me about what about schaefer is schaefer i've had so much joy in my life and I'm now beginning to accept life on life's terms. I mean, I look at my two kids and do I live vicariously through you two? Yes, I do. You're my kids. Yeah, I'm going to continue to be your parent. But just like you alluded before, uh, when you were a sophomore, I need to learn how to understand what my lane is. Mm -hmm. and understand and accept where our relationship is. As our relationship grows into different 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 ways and as far as me i'm I, like i said before in this show i'm going to enjoy everything that, that that god has given me um and continue to, to continue to be that parent and be that parent the way that you need me to be that parent our relationship is so different now right. you know then you're actually helping me um with Devin because he's going to go through very similar uh, a very similar mindset and a very similar transition that you went through and that I went through. And that's one of the things that I have to really remember with my age that I went through the same thing. And I don't know if I necessarily had the supporting cast that, you know, hopefully I, I've given you, but, yeah. but uh, I really, you know, when you talk about it, I'm not an empty nester. I'm mm -hmm. not. I, I'm not an empty nest. There's so much joy in my life right now. And oh, you know, that's why. That mean, but empty nest doesn't mean you don't have, like, you're like a lonely spinster. Right. No one, but, like, I, you are, I think there's, okay, I hear what you're saying, but people have to understand that you are, like, in denial. Here's why. You've been in denial your whole life. This man thinks he's going to live to 110 years old. And that's I fine. But the, you know, what, what people, what people re need to realize is what they're witnessing right now is the way you your mindset is, is what keeps you young, what keeps you positive, what keeps you, and these are the type of things we talk about when we talk purpose. Like your mind is the ultimate control over you that you have about how you feel towards yourself, about how you feel towards your situation. And right now you're in a positive space, especially with everything going on, you're in a positive space where you're excited for your next journey. You're excited for the next hobby you add into your life. Like, so you, you when you say you're not, a Nessie, you're not a lonely, you're not in a space where you, you're, looking bad at the situation you're more appreciating and like letting the situation come to you because you're ready that right. is that that is what's exciting to kind of witness especially as a child like as your child um to be able to be like now nah, i don't really have to worry about this man he's he's probably gonna be out on roller coasters or something but it's, it's funny how throughout time though you, you your your idea towards everything changes and you realize like you're in constant new chapters of life I think that's what's special about this topic and what's exciting about it. Because I asked you like what your purpose is now. Now your purpose may literally just be enjoying life and just trying to chase the next best thing. That is what your purpose is. And then in a couple of years, it would be a completely different purpose, right? right. So I yeah. think that's special. But my question for you, and I wanna, as someone who's been on earth longer than I have, like why do you think, it talked about fear. Why do you think people are afraid or struggle to try to find their purpose and find like their true happiness? It's the voices around them. 
it's the voices around them. And and a lot of times there's negative voices around you. And that's what I heard, heard on Friday is that you had to, and even with me, you had to put yourself in a space where you didn't have those negative voices. Because I think intuitive, instinctively, we, we always hesitate about taking it off. Let's start. Okay, let's go. We also, when we have those voices around you that are necessarily conducive to your progress, it makes it even harder. And mm -hmm. I think what happens with, with, and I think what's been a good part of our lives is that we have faith. And we keep talking about that, but that is our family core. Let go, let God, and not be afraid to, to take that blind step and at the same time, put yourself around the right people. And I, fortunately, we've been able to do that. We've been able to do that. And the more you do that, the easier it comes. It, the next time it comes, the opportunity, yeah. the more you do it. And it gets easier and easier and easier. And you begin to know, um, you know, I talk about having people on a shelf in my life. You know, I put people that are conducive to my progress on that shelf where I can see them, okay? And I'm not necessarily saying the people that are up here, or up here or down here or not, but these are the people that are gonna really help me, support me, and something you said on Friday, they're gonna support you in your ambitions, in your goals, in your dreams, is you're surrounding yourself by those people. I have to, at my age, have to continue to do that. I have to continue to do that because I, I still continue to need to, to develop in that way. So that's that's what's been key for me. No, I agree with you. And I think that in, we played the video, but one thing that I think everyone realizes that if you don't have self-assurance and self-affirmation towards your own dream, then like you can pick the best people to have around you all the time. But like if you're not strong enough in like who you are and what you believe in, you're going to crumble at the first sight of any pushback or someone looking at your like that's what you do, and then you're gonna be like, well, geez, like maybe this isn't something I want to do. If you're not strong in what you believe in, and you're not strong in, in how you feel in the moment, constantly you're gonna be searching for like happiness, thinking that happiness lies in the hands of others. And I think that that's like you spot on. Like your supporting cast, like I said on Friday, Kim needs to be A plus, like A plus positivity, A plus. Like my shirt says, it says finding the positive in an A minus world. Right. If you don't have like, then you can have all of that. But if you're not comfortable in like yourself and like you're not, you don't have your own relationship with God, and you don't trust God's purpose in your life, and you don't trust the purpose in front of you, you're gonna crumble, and you're not gonna be strong enough to handle or chase something that you really love. Like you have to have a strong self assurance in what you believe in. But one question I have, and I couldn't help but think about Kobe Bryant when we talk about purpose. And I think it's what one question I had to decide is, is purpose the same thing as dreams? Like, like my dream is to be a professional basketball player. Is that the same thing as my purpose? And I had to try to figure it out because often we allow who we want to be to dictate who we are. And that's fine. But sometimes your happiness relies on a lot more than what you want to be. Right. So when I think of Kobe Bryant, I think. Kobe Bryant's dream was to be the best ever, to win championships, to get MVPs. He, he wanted to be the biggest basketball player. He wanted to be bigger than Michael Jordan, right? But his, Kobe Bryant's purpose was to show us how to work hard, to show us discipline, to show us how to be a great father, a great husband, right? All together, his, his purpose was to inspire. And Kobe Bryant was comfortable in who he was and was disciplined in who his routine and stuff like that, that it was contagious to all of us. And I think that the dream came along with the purpose. So I don't think, I mean, you could disagree with me, but I think your purpose is more kind of like who you are and where you are in your moment than it is what you want to be. But I also think they can come hand in hand. What do you think? I do. You said something that was, that I've always said in my life, progress, not perfection. Progress, always be progressing. You know, something that Denzel talked about is discipline consistency. I think being in a, being who I am, my DNA is, is, is being an athlete and growing up with what I had visibility to is something that I acquired, something that I was able to translate to you and Devin and mommy. We were that. And, you know, so people have to understand that, yeah, we, we've had disappointments. We had tremendous disappointments, but we had to get back on track right. and not allow any of that to stop us to continue to progress. You know, it's okay to dream. 
It's yeah. okay to have goals, but have the discipline, have the consistency on a daily to be able to strive toward that. Right. And, and, and don't go a day without that. You talked about that on Friday. If you're not progressing, because you either progress or you're not progressing. You're not staying the same. You're dormant. Okay. If you yeah. want your mindset is on always every day, whether it's spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, you know, keep that mindset that every day I want to get better. Okay. Right. I think that gives you the confidence. Confidence eliminates fear. Mm-hmm. Fear yeah. is the mobilizing uh, component, tangible. I mean, our world is the way it is right now because of fear, right? We mm-hmm. overcome that. So, right. you know, those are all the things I think um, that, uh, that that makes it easier. For when I listened to you on Friday, um, I, I, I saw a lot of that. And what's, what's, what's really nice and what's hopeful about it is that you'll continue on that journey because your purpose changes. Your yeah. purpose changes on a yearly. Yeah. No, I agree with you. And I think when I was watching the video earlier and listening to you, you talk about purpose. We talk about progression over perfection. It's like purpose is kind of like the nitty gritty work that comes along in your life and can change in the factors and things that are kind of in your, not in your control or are in your control. Purpose is like your inner being. If someone's to look at you and, and kind of had to paint a picture of you, your purpose would be, would be visible in that photo. And I think that that is character as well, right? Like, like that. it's who, who you say my purpose is I want to start a foundation to get back other people. That says a lot about my character. It says a lot about who I am. And like Denzel Washington said, you don't, there's never a U-Haul truck behind a hearse. Whenever right. I hear him, say it, it's like, so, so, when I, right. So you're thinking, okay, I'm, I'm doing this foundation. I'm, I'm giving these kids a lot of scholarships. Like that, that's something that people do, right? But at the end of the day, when you get off this earth and people at your funeral and people are at memorial service, they're seeing the character and what your purpose was during these time periods. And each person has a different version of what your purpose was because they met you at different parts in your life. So I think that that's special. Like, I think it really is like more of a character thing than it is your dream and your goals. But it doesn't mean you can't have goals within your purpose. Yeah, yeah. Like, when I was watching the video, I was like, there, you can have goals within your purpose. You can have goals for yourself. Like every day I'm going to discipline myself to read, read the Bible. Every day I'm going to discipline myself to, to read a book, right? Meditate, um, write down goals I have for my next year, right? Faith go out to eat by herself, try new places, right? Stuff like that. Those like strengthen your character, strengthen your purpose. And I think that those are, you can set goals within your purpose, but they're very different from when you set goals towards your craft right. or a dream you have and how to get there. So, well, my question is for you has how, let's talk about this. When we lost mom at the time, how did your purpose start to mold? Because in my, for me at that time, and I talked about this when I when I read a, I did a speech at, at Duke uh, my senior year, I talked about how your purpose, like a parent gives you so much purpose. It gives you so much love. It gives you so much. But as time, I had to realize how to kind of like find my own purpose and find my own morals and my, my own character um, after that experience. How did your purpose kind of mold through the years following that experience with us and like was it more parenting? Was it a more Schaefer trying to figure out how to be with just Schaefer? What was it like? Um, initially, the thought of me being by myself because we talked, you know, right. we were with mommy over a two month period. Um, fortunately and unfortunately, but we were able to talk a lot about what that purpose would be. Yeah. Um, but I would be raising you two, but she was very clear about um, what she needed me to do, what she wanted me to do, and what she wished for you, you two. And um, initially, it was hard to listen to, but um, it gave me some real clarity to what my purpose would be, and that was to uh, give you two everything that she wanted to give you two. Um, you know, support, love, 
you know, encouragement, um, spirituality. Um, you know, she just had gotten on track with the the athletic part of it. I mean, when she realized that you were you were potentially a, a D one basketball player, but all those things was very helpful for me to see because we talked about it. And when she when we when we lost her, I just put my put my nose down, and I just kind of. This went forward, and I'm obviously, you know, with that being said, I still had to continue to learn how to be a dad and a parent, and mm-hmm. all the different things that normal parents had to learn how to do. Um, uh, but that was real, real helpful, and I just, you know, prayed about it. What Denzel Denzel Washington talked about putting your, your sneakers way up under the bed so you get on your knees and pray about it. It was a lot of prayer. Because there's a lot that I didn't understand, a lot I didn't know. Um, but I think you two were very, very mature um, during that process, and you just, you, you guys just really rolled with it. And um, sports really helped a lot. I mean, we spent a lot of time on the court, on the football field. We spent a lot of time at the dinner table. We spent a lot of time together. So um, I just. As a result of that conversation, Faith, that was that was very, very helpful for me. Yeah, no, I can understand it because I feel like with time, your purpose changes, but sometimes your pur- purpose changes and you don't want it to change. I think that you often have an internal fight where you don't want to have to change or say we when you lose a job during this time period, a lot of people are losing their jobs. And so now they're having to figure out, OK, now what am I going to be? They have to look inside and, and realize, okay, also job shopping is hard to do right now too. So so I think that this is a time period where a lot of people are um, constant transition. And I think that maybe you can speak a little bit on, on maybe finding your purpose after an experience like losing a job or in a constant transition where the pressure is on you. Like, what are some of the things that have helped you through time, through like after disappointments or adversity um, that others can use? Well, it's easy, you know. It's a part of the. It's part of growth. It's mm-hmm. part of the journey. You know, it's, it's almost like a bad play during a football game, right? Yeah. You're gonna have a bad play, but you got to go back to the huddle and you have to regroup and you have to continue to play, right? right? I mean, God put things in your life for certain reasons. And he wants you to grow from those. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's always the glass is half filled versus half empty. So everything, you know, every transition, every job, every loss, every bump in the road, I learn how to turn it into um, growth. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, that was a result of experiencing a lot of it, growing up as a kid, going through what I went through, injuries. You know, being being a being an athlete, uh, you know, going going to college, uh, you know, playing professional football, getting traded, getting cut, having injuries. I mean, so I've had to overcome a lot of those things and not allowing any of that to immobilize me. Because life life continues on. So using those um, and because God put those in your path for a reason. And being able to overcome those things um, gives me a lot more. Um, you talk about positivity, okay? I mean, everything that has happened, you know, to us, you know, it's been difficult, but we always find that that way out. And uh, that's just my over over time, just my my relationship with God, and just having enough faith to know that He's not going to give you what I can't handle. Right. And I think that's hard not to apply let go, let God to that situation because that's exactly what it is. If you were to define define that saying, that's what it is, what you just said. And I talked about the show on Friday about how you really have no control over anything in your life. And the moment you can accept that, the moment you can accept this life is a gift and not something that, you know what I mean? The moment you can accept that and you turn your trust and you trust God, you just trust the moments you're in, it's so much more relaxing and freeing than having to worry constantly about what's going to happen next, what you can do, stuff like that. Like, you can't control a lot of the bad things that happen in this world. No. You can't control. The only thing you can control is how you respond and how you act towards it. Okay. And I think that 
that's like the key to like happiness. That's the key to staying sane in this world is understanding that life keeps rolling, like you said, and that at the end of the day, God won't steer you wrong. God has an idea. He has a path already laid out for you that you haven't even thought about. So I think that what did you, here's one thing I tell people all the time. It's called collateral. It's collateral, right? Collateral damage kind of. If you think about one disappointment, it leads to another disappointment that leads to a happiness. But you like it, think about a place you are right now in your life and think about if you had made a different decision or if something hadn't happened in your life, where would you be? And you got to remember like, shoot, I actually am happy in where I am. I'm comfortable where I am, I'm thankful where I am. So I wouldn't change anything that has happened in my past. Right. Regardless of if it was disappointing or not. Right. So that's what I constantly think about like when we think about collateral damage in a way, you think about like, all the things you have to go through, the hurdles, you gotta jump over the walls, you gotta run through. And then you sit back and you realize, like, wow, that was exhausting. In the moment I was tired and sad and it was hard and we were frustrated, but I would never change that experience for anything because I like where I am right now, and I'm right. happy where I am right now. Right, right. You yeah, know, that was, that's also about making sure that you put your surround yourself with people, the right people, yeah, that, that support that. You know, yeah. positive people, not toxic people. Um, and, I, and I saw that, and you learned that, and then I guess we learned that growing up. I mean, me, me managing the culture of a basketball team. Make sure we have the right parents, the right, the right teammates. But you learn that um, as you share with us on Friday, putting yourself, surrounding yourself with the right people. That when you do go through those storms, that you know they're not, they're not, they're not going to, to make it worse. And that's that's really key. Yeah, and and then I, it is like I talk about supporting cast, and it's like. There's so many people in the world that, that one, that you shouldn't be hung up on losing friendships or people that you love. Like that is so important. Like if someone's draining you or really not supporting you the way that you feel that you would support them or you should support them and you get, it goes back to the golden rule. You treat people the way you want to be treated. And if you feel like your energy is not being reciprocated and you feel like whenever you present your idea or your purpose or something you love to do to this person, it feels like it's a hassle or a job, that probably isn't the person that should be around you. Right. Or if maybe they're not engaging in the conversation, that also might not be the person that should be around you. And I think that me and you've had many conversations and we have seen a lot of people come and go like in friendships and like people in our circles. And it's just like people evolve and that's okay. It's okay, and I feel like we need to normalize the idea of ending friendships just because they ended. Like, right. I that, like that should be normal. Like, why do we make it like such a bad thing that okay, this friendship ended? There should be hard feelings. There should be uncomfortableness. There should be no. Like, it ended just because it get, got to the end of the track. I think that that is like a major thing. When you start to normalize that, and you like learn to appreciate the friendship in the moment it was, instead of the friendship, like instead of like constantly be bitter towards it or negative towards the experience, and be like that. That I think is, is something that causes a lot of people because now you're putting a lot of energy towards thinking about having to keep right. that person away. Like, no, it just ended. It's fine. It's not, I mean, why isn't that normalized? Right? Why do we constantly have like a thing where like it ended because someone did something wrong? Like maybe you just outgrew each other. Right. So, and right. maybe you could talk a little bit about that one through your experience in the in the professional level, but also then going on to like to corporate world and starting like that type of experience in your life, and then also becoming maybe a father and how you had to lose some friends there. Right. Well, that's you know you have to learn you know what you don't want to be codependent. I mean, have enough self love about yourself that you don't need you know someone that's draining you and that you feel like okay, um, you know, and I, I found myself doing that you know, but I grew from that you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, you know, as we, you know, as, as we grow older, as we, as we mature, we have a lot more confidence in ourselves. Um, and I've watched you, I've watched, you probably watch me, you watch families come and go. And, yeah. and that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm not close to them, but again, I put them on a different shelf, right? Yep. My relationship with them um, has changed. I, mean, I don't normally ex people completely out of my life. I mean, they they become acquaintance um, mm -hmm. because for some reason they had some value, 
in my life, but then maybe something happened um, that, okay, I, I need to put them up on the shelf or put them down on the shelf. They're not right here anymore. And it's right. okay. It's okay to be able to do that. It takes a lot of courage. Yep. You know, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. A lot of people, we, we're, we're powerless over people, places, and things. We're powerless over what people think and how they treat you sometimes. You have to have the courage to put them up on that shelf or away from that shelf where they're not in your visibility anymore. And that's, mm -hmm. that's something that you need to be able to do. And uh, I've, I've watched you do it. Of course, obviously, I, I continue to do it. But growing up and during that time, raising you and Devin. Those ten, these last ten years, I had to put people that wanted to be in that path. Okay, okay, you can't be in this path. It's not good for me for you to be in this path. Okay, I may not be making all the decisions that you think I should be making, but it is my path. Get out. Yeah. So I had to learn how to do that, and uh, that just comes with uh, with growth, and it comes with you know having the courage to be able to do that. Yeah. No, I agree. It's so important. You don't realize how much, no matter how hard we try, how much other things around us affect you on a daily. You can't be strong all the time. So it's important right. that you have people around you that can help you be strong and help you remember who you are. Right. So yeah, that changes. That changes as you grow. It changes as, as you digress. But it, it it's okay that it changes. I wish we would normalize that. But right. no, I think today was a great show. I think that we did dove into a lot of stuff. If you haven't seen the show, to um, we can replay it or we can in a couple of weeks, but also it's still on our Facebook page. Um, episode 48. It was, that was a powerful show. You haven't watched that show. That that show is powerful. I'm, I, I keep, I'm, I'm bragging about my daughter, but it was a phenomenal show. And um, like I said, you had a lot of views and I was very proud. I cannot talk with substance for, for a few minutes. <laughs> you did. It was great. So, well, thank you. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this Monday morning. Catch the show if you can. Uh, share the show if you can. We will see you guys on Wednesday to keep it going. Thank you to Amazon Fire, Facebook, YouTube, Roku, Apple TV, most importantly, on Phoenix, Arizona, our key platform, E360 TV. Again, this is Faith Family Focus, where we want to use our faith as a vehicle to heal and sustain others on strengthening their own family core. And of course, let go, let God, let go, let faith, let go, let love. Everyone have a great Labor Day. Stay safe and enjoy your family. See you Wednesday. Mm -hmm.